Hello learners, I am back with another interesting topic that is pattern formation in Drosophila from the developmental biology unit. I made a video on Drosophila as a model organism in life science earlier. If you are interested, please watch that one too. The reference study material is used for making this video is the book of Benjamin A. Pierce and Snootstad Simmons. You may go through such books for lucid conceptual knowledge about developmental genetics. In this video, you are going to learn about brief life cycle of Drosophila, early development of Drosophila embryo, establishment of main body axis by egg polarity genes. The other essential genes such as segmentation genes and homeotic genes will be described thoroughly in my upcoming videos. So let's learn. The life cycle of fruit fly consists of number of stages. Embryogenesis, three larval instar, prepupal, pupal and adult stage. The generation time is roughly 10 days from fertilized egg to adult. A drosophila egg develops into a hollow cylinder of cells. Within few hours, segmentation appears. The embryo develops into a larva that passes through three stages before becoming a pupa. The pupa undergoes metamorphosis and finally here is the adult. Now we need to understand the basic body parts. These are head, thorax and abdomen. The thorax consists of three segments. The first thoracic segment carries a pair of legs. The second thoracic segment carries a pair of legs and a pair of wings. And the third thoracic segment carries a pair of legs and halter. Halter are those rudiments of second pair of wings. Sperm and egg nuclei fuse to create a single cell diploid zygote. Its diploid nucleus immediately divides nine times without any division of the cytoplasm. Consequently, it creates a single multinucleate cell, which is known as syncytium. These nuclei are scattered throughout the cytoplasm. Later, these migrate toward the periphery of the embryo and divide several more, creating syncytial blastoderm. The cell membrane grows inward and around each nucleus, creating a layer of approximately 6,000 cells at the outer surface of the embryo. The resulting structure is the cellular blastoderm. Nuclei at one end of the embryo developed into pole cells, which eventually give rise to the primordial germ cell. The early embryo then undergoes further development in three distinct stages. First one is the anterior posterior axis and the dorsal ventral axis of the embryo are established and the egg polarity genes controls it. Second one is the number and orientation of the body segments are determined and controlled by segmentation genes. And the final one, the identity of each individual segment is established and controlled by homeotic genes. Today we will learn about egg polarity genes that play a crucial role in establishing the two main axes of development in fruit flies. The egg polarity genes are transcribed into mRNAs in the course of egg formation in the maternal parent and these mRNAs become incorporated into the cytoplasm of the egg. After fertilization, the mRNAs are translated into proteins that play an important role in determining the anterior posterior and dorsal ventral axis of the embryo. Because the mRNA of the polarity genes are produced by the female parent and influence the phenotype of the offspring, the traits encoded by them are example of genetic maternal effects. There are two sets of egg polarity genes. One set determines the anterior posterior axis and the other determines the dorsal ventral axis. These genes work by setting up concentration gradients of morphogens. A morphogen is a protein that varies in concentration. A polarity genes function by producing proteins that becomes asymmetrically distributed in the cytoplasm. 
giving the egg polarity. Now let's understand how does the determination of the dorsal and ventral axis happens. The dorsal ventral axis defines the back and belly of a fly. At least 12 different genes determine this axis. One of the most important being a gene called dorsal. The dorsal gene is transcribed and translated in the maternal ovary and the resulting mRNA and protein are transferred to the egg during oogenesis. In a newly laid egg, mRNA and protein encoded by the dorsal genes are uniformly distributed throughout the cytoplasm after the nuclei have migrated to the periphery of the embryo. Dorsal protein becomes redistributed and along one side of the embryo, dorsal protein remains in the cytoplasm. This side will become the dorsal surface. Along the other side, dorsal proteins is taken up into the nuclei. This side will become the ventral surface. At this point, there is a smooth gradient of increasing nuclear dorsal concentration from the dorsal to the ventral side. The nuclear uptake of dorsal protein is thought to be governed by a protein called cactus, which binds to the dorsal protein and traps it in the cytoplasm. The presence of yet another protein called toll leads to the phosphylation of cactus, causing it to be degraded. When cactus is degraded, dorsal is released and can move into the nucleus. Together, cactus and toll regulate the nuclear distribution of dorsal protein, which in turn determines the dorsal ventral axis of the embryo. Inside the nucleus, dorsal protein acts as a transcription factor, binding to the regulatory sites on the DNA and activating or repressing the expression of other genes. High nuclear concentration of dorsal protein activates a gene called twist, which causes ventral tissues to develop. Low nuclear concentration of dorsal proteins activate a gene called decapentaplegic, which specifies dorsal structures. In this way, the ventral and dorsal sides of the embryo are determined. The anterior posterior axis in Drosophila is created by the regional synthesis of transcription factors encoded by the hunchback and caudal genes. These two genes are transcribed in the nerve cells of the maternal germline. These spatial cells support the growth and development of the oocyte. The maternal transcripts of the hunchback and caudal genes are then carried from the nerve cells into the oocyte where they become uniformly distributed in the cytoplasm. The hunchback RNA is translated only in the anterior part and the caudal RNA is translated only in the posterior part. This differential translation produces concentration gradients of the proteins encoded by these two genes. Hunchback protein is concentrated in the anterior part of the embryo and the caudal protein is concentrated in the posterior part. These two proteins then function to activate or repress transcription of the genes whose products are involved in the differentiation of the embryo along its anterior posterior axis. Now the question may arise that what limits the translation of hunchback RNA to the anterior part of the embryo and caudal RNA to the posterior part? It turns out that two maternally supplied RNAs are involved, one transcribed from the bicoid gene and the other from the nanos gene. Both of these RNAs are synthesized in the nurse cells of the maternal germline and are then transported into the oocyte. The bicoid RNA becomes anchored at the anterior end of the developing oocyte and the nano's RNA becomes anchored at the posterior end. After fertilization, each type of RNA is translated locally and the resulting protein products diffuse through the embryo to form concentration gradients. Bicoid protein is concentrated at the anterior end and nano's protein is concentrated at the posterior end. The bicoid protein has two functions. First, it acts as a transcription factor to stimulate the synthesis of RNAs from several genes, including hunchback. 
These RNAs are then translated into proteins that control the formation of the anterior structure of the embryo. Second, bicoid protein prevents the translation of caudal RNA by binding to sequences in the 3' untranslated region of that RNA. Thus, wherever bicoid protein is abundant, caudal RNA is not translated into protein. Conversely, wherever bicoid protein is scarce, caudal RNA is translated into protein. The translational regulation of caudal RNA by bicoid protein is therefore responsible for the gradient of caudal protein that forms in the embryo. Because caudal protein is a specific activator, the genes that control posterior differentiation, the part of the embryo that has the highest concentration of caudal protein develops posterior structures. Unlike bicoid proteins, nanos proteins does not function as a transcription factor. However, like bicoid protein, is it does function as a translation regulator. Nanos protein is concentrated in the posterior of the embryo and there it binds to the 3' untranslated region of hunchback RNA and causes the degradation of that RNA. Consequently, Hunchback protein is not produced in the posterior of the embryo. Instead, its synthesis is restricted to the anterior of the embryo where it acts as a transcription factor to regulate the expression of genes involved in anterior-posterior differentiation. Wherever hunchback protein is synthesized, the embryo develops anterior structure. Bicoid and nanos proteins are examples of morphogens. Morphogenesis are those, I already mentioned, substances that control developmental events in a concentration-dependent manner. The concentration gradients of these two morphogens are the reverse of each other, where bicoid protein is abundant, nanos protein is scarce, and vice versa. Thus, in Drosophila, the anterior-posterior axis is defined by high concentrations of these morphogens at opposite ends of the early embryo this is all about today's topic learners feel free to comment if you have any suggestions or queries please subscribe our channel make it grow share with others if you find it helpful in any way so thank you so much for your patience and i'll be back soon with next part